Okay, because we can totally see yours. <laughs> it's, it's of great worth to distract from my first one useful one. So we do another one. Yeah? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll take us in, and then you take cool. it away with the whiskey. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Single Malt Review, coming from us to you. What have you brought along today, Dave? Well, it's coming to us straight from a wee wooden cask here. It is in fact Edwardur, straight from the cask. Novel presentation we got there. We have is a 10 year old cask strength sherry matured whiskey from Edwardur, one of the smaller distilleries edging towards the highlands. Distilled back in '99, the tail end of last century, and bottled in 2010, I believe. Yes, and a gorgeous wee bottle mm. it is too. A so half liter, smaller sherry than sherry cask. Are we? It is a sherry butt. Mm. Yes, uh, 1,029 bottles from that butt. Goodness me, it was mm. a big one. Say so 59.2 percent ABV, so still strong. It's lost a little over the years, but it is a very rich dark amber color. Mm. Let's dig in. Edredura, I think, leans towards the sherry style in most cases. I'm sure they use plenty of bourbon, but um, my memory of their standard Edredura 10 year old is it's, it's quite, quite heavily into the sherry end of the spectrum, so it'll be interesting to try this 100% sherry version. Now, that's pretty jolly strong there yes. at that strength, but I guess we can have a little look. We're drinking today from the Bigger, wider, more balloon-like Glen Cairn glass. Mm. Great for nosing. Not so great for taking very cautious, very yes, small drams. Yes. Great, great for pouring uh, way more than you need. But mm. that, uh, that has its application, but usually not on camera. Mm. Now, something I've noticed with Edradura is often in their heavily sherried whiskies, it's often there's a very slight tang of sulphur. I believe sulphur is used sometimes to treat sherry casks. Mm. I'm not sure of the it's, process. It's but used in... It's used in almost every case oh. to a greater or lesser extent to sterilize a sherry cask and make it safe for transport from right. Spain over to Scotland without ah, the cask is going the to, then... too funky along Got the it. way. And it's actually quite a quite a core flavor in mm. sherry whiskey. Normally it's suitably low that it blends in with the rest of the flavor spectra and you don't really notice it or really not cognizantly if you're thinking of it, but uh, sometimes, uh, particularly in whiskies, I think the most typical sulfury whisky out there is Ben Nevis. It has quite a good, reliable sulfury twang mm. on it. I've and, not had many um, Ben Nevises, but I've always noticed that in Edradura in particular. Mm. And it is, it is detectable here, and it will be more mm. detectable the more sherry a whisky uses. And so when, you, when we're dealing with a single sherry cask like this, it should be at its strongest. Uh, it's quite an interesting process. Sometimes uh, the old way is they actually lower a wee sulphur candle into the cask and burn it so that it creates, creates sulphur inside and that will kill all the bugs oh. and then ideally they will retract it very carefully but sometimes it goes a bit wrong and the camera, uh, the candle rather, can fall off and then you've got sort of raw sulphur in the barrel and they do what they can to wash it out but hmm. it's, it's not a particularly scientific forensic process so um, there, there's variable levels of sulfur in most cases distilleries will try to avoid overly sulfured barrels because they yeah they, they, they too much flavor coming from them speaking of flavor or in this case odors mm, mm, yeah, hints of a bubble gum a little bit of maybe peaches and pineapple and some fresh wood chips mm. tinned, fresh and timber. Tinned, tinned fruit on this one tinned pineapples a um, bit of a sort of tin apple and pear as well, kind of a real fruit salad, kind of a kind of a nose there. The wood is pretty evident as well. It's obviously yes. a very very active sherry cask. You can see by the colour. I'm not sure if they're going to say whether it's uncoloured or not. It doesn't look like they are, hmm. but um, if it is coloured, I don't think it will be particularly heavily coloured because this is sort of what I'd expect from a fully sherry whiskey like this. Especially at its original cask strength. Mm. And there isn't too much burn. That's very strong, but I'm not getting mm. a gigantic prickle off that, so let's let's <sighs> investigate. Big hit of alcohol first off, obviously. But then those sherry flavours and that whiff of sulphur. Mm. 
Oh yeah, no. There's there's the strength. That's that's really quite quite overpoweringly strong. Just a moment. I will have to give that a wee bit of water. Yes. Get it to open up a wee bit. It's quite a quite a cooling sensation though. There's a bit of eucalyptus, almost some menthol, and mentholy mentholy character. More of a eucalyptus than a mint, but quite quite cooling. Interestingly, the water has not altered the intensity of the colour much. It won't be obvious on camera, but it's really added a kind of a very cloudy, oily aspect to it. Sort of a lava lamp effect. Mm. Only a little more subtle than that, obviously. But give it a bit of a mix. That's better. Mm. So mm. that's much better. That's, that's <sighs> opened up. This is... It's aggressively sherried. This has a sort of a... Um, sort of a, a boonery character to it of a very, very active sherry cask that's been bottled fairly young. Um, there's a lot of hot tyre rubber mm. going on in here. Quite a lot of sort of petrochemical kind of flavours. Let's see. Again, hints of licorice. Again, more of that sulphur. A bit of, bit of dark bush honey. Mm. No, this is uh, exceptionally rubbery, actually. Mm. Um, Edredora particularly strong fully sherry Edredor does produce some of the rubberiest whiskies on the market as far as I've found their Ibisco which I think is now discontinued which was their previous cask strength expression came in a slightly taller bottle um, it really was their version of Abuna that had all of the same um, characteristics that that thing really did taste like someone was doing a uh, donut on the back of your tongue. That that was burning rubber in every way. Mm -hmm. And this this is quite reminiscent. It's an astonishingly heavy whiskey. If you'd watched the previous episode, we were looking at a very, very light, very young Buna Harbin, and this is almost the opposite in terms of in terms of whiskey style. This is really, really weighty. There's enormous barrel character coming mm -hmm. through here. When it was a larger barrel and a three-year-old whiskey, but then probably a much more fresh barrel that's not been previously used for whiskey, would you say? More like to be a fresher cask? I think if this isn't a first fill, then it's a second fill off a very short first fill phase. I think this is the first fill because what I think whiskey producers do when they produce these young, heavily sherried styles is that they know, as I do, that you can't really produce very old whiskey out of a first fill sherry because the wood character gets too strong too fast because we're dealing with a 10 year old whiskey here and in my opinion the wood is almost out of control any any more time in here and this would be getting unpleasant with the intensity of these rubbery overly oaky flavors so they're effectively seasoning their casks they're bringing down the amount of aggressive wood character coming through so that when they fill them on their second time they'll produce a far more elegant older whiskey. Now that the, the the barrels have done the sort of tour of duty on the first fill the edge has been taken off and then they'll be ready to put another fill of whiskey in and that might age for 25 years right. and produce a far more far more elegant far more saleable older whiskey. More mellow and safe too because obviously certainly, when certainly. whiskey is beyond a certain age mm. it can sometimes turn and just this, stop being good. Mm, this, this I think is, is is very much on the verge of turning. This I think would this this I think is a good whiskey. I think it would be a poor twelve year old whiskey because I think it's aging very very quickly in terms of its oaked characteristics. It's very very aggressive. Mm. Yeah, I almost almost need a bit of cheese or something to mm. support this one. This is really really quite quite punchy. I think as far as scores go, as far as scores go, I'll probably give it a 7. Before I put water in, I was in 6.5 territory, but I think that would be mean for this one. It's in many ways a bit raw, but you have to remember that it is still just 10 years in a first fill, probably, sherry. So it's, there's going to be an element of rawness. So. Taking that on board, I think it's a it's a seven for me. I'm not really down with the very very heavily sherried characters um, in these younger whiskies, so it's really not up my alley kind of a thing. But I do recognise it for its qualities, so no, it's a seven for me. 
I, on the other hand, am very much down with heavily sherried whiskey, mm. and this is no exception. But what is exceptional about this is the intensity of that sulfurous undertone. Now, I'm from Rotorua, infamously sulfurous town, so you could say I got a love-hate relationship with sulfur. In this case, I think the sherry on its own would be almost too cloying. That sulfur helps just to cut the sweetness a little and add a bit of bit of bitterness, what you normally get from peat, for instance, into what would otherwise be a uniquely sweet liqueur drop. Hmm. It's not a perfect whiskey, but it's a really, really good whiskey, and it's a true exemplar of its style. At the end of the day, I would give it a solid 8.0. Mmm. Ever the sherried fiend, Dave. So, not bad scores at all, and I think you can still buy this one. Yeah, if indeed, I'm interested. I so, some last week. Not sure about the Ibisco, I think that may be put to rest, but this one, certainly available, and uh, the standard 10 year old, very available. Anyway, this has been the Single Malt Review. Thank you for watching. I know we've been slightly sparse on the content at the moment, but um, we will pick things up and get you the whiskies that you need in the future. So check back in and do subscribe if you're interested so you don't miss one. We will be back in the meantime. Slanjo.